Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model foundation systems in the STAD Foundation Advanced General Mode. Over the next series of videos, we will show you how to model foundation systems in STAD Foundation Advanced. This will include two major workflows. The first workflow is to model your supports and your loads directly in STAD Foundation Advanced. Our second workflow is to import your model information, including your supports and your model loading, from a STAD Pro analyzed model. In this video, we will show you the complete workflow for modeling your foundation system directly in STAD Foundation Advanced. This will include the process for modeling all of your supports, including column locations and pedestals, and how to model your support loading, which will include all of your load cases and load combinations. This will bring you immediately to the STAD Foundation Advanced Start page. Now currently we don't have a file open yet and if I scroll down on the start page I can see the three main modes that are available in STAD Foundation Advanced. The first mode is a general foundation mode. This is where you would design all the foundations for an entire foundation plan. So we can model several different supports and investigate different types of foundation systems such as isolated foundations, combined footings, pile cap foundations, machine vibration foundations, and also mat foundations. We also have a plant mode, which is basically a mode to design plant foundation types, such as vertical vessels, horizontal vessels, tanks, and the lateral analysis of drilled piers. And we also have a toolkit mode, which is basically a simplified wizard for designing isolated, combined, or pile cap foundations. For this course, we're going to be modeling directly in the general mode of STAD Foundation Advanced. So within our start page, we'll go ahead and click on the general mode. Once we enter the general mode, we'll be able to see the official STAD Foundation Advanced graphical user interface. Our typical workflow for STAD Foundation Advanced is to use our main navigator and to work our way from top to bottom for modeling our foundation system. Whenever we select one of the options over in the main navigator, we'll see that the data input pane will change to allow us to enter that specific type of input. Now before we do any type of modeling, we're going to go ahead and save our model. So I'm going to go up to the ribbon in the Home tab and click on the Save As icon. and I'll go ahead and save my model. The first step in creating our foundation plan is to model the support locations. Over in the main navigator, I will now select the foundation plan group and expand it. Now I have a couple different options for generating my foundation plan. I can go directly into the column position table where I would input the coordinates of all of my supports within my foundation plan, or I can use a linear or radial grid to assist in modeling the foundation systems. For this course, I'm going to be using a linear grid, so I'm going to select the linear grid setup. Once I select this option, I will see that all the other options are available in the data input pane to define this grid system. I'm going to define the origin at 0, 0, 0, and again the vertical axis in STAD Foundation Advance is the Y axis. I'm going to enter a spacing of 20 feet in the X direction and 30 feet in the Z direction. And then I'm going to enter the number of lines around the origin. Lines to the left, right, top, and bottom. Next, I'm going to enter the grid direction in the X direction. That will be the horizontal direction. Show grid. I'm going to turn this to yes. And I can even save as a default. Next, we can see that now my linear grid has been created. So here I basically have six 
grid intersections that are actually going to represent my six coordinate points. Now to model foundations using a grid system, I'm going to go to my Tools tab in my ribbon and I'm going to click on the Add Support icon. Here I can click at Grid Intersection to model the supports and this tool would require grid intersections to specify a snap point. I've done one foundation so far and I'm going to just click around for each grid intersection. Now we can see that when I model the supports on screen, automatically these coordinate values are going to be entered into my column position table. Again, I could enter this information directly in my column position table if I would prefer that workflow, or I can also do a combination of the two, modeling using grids and also entering into the column position table. Whenever we complete each exercise, we're also going to make sure that we save our model. So I'm going to go back to the Home tab and click on the Save icon. After specifying our support locations, we are now going to enter our column dimensions. Over in the main navigator, we will now select the column dimension item, and we can enter the appropriate information in the data input pane. For each of these columns, we're going to specify a rectangular column but we do have circular or octagonal columns available. I'm going to enter my column length or diameter. I'm going to enter a one foot column and a one foot width. For a column reinforcement diameter, I'm going to enter 0 0.79. Now this is typically the value that would be used to represent the diameter of reinforcement used within the columns. Now this value, although we entered it here, is used in checking compression, development length, and isolated footings, but they're only used for the IS code. The same thing goes for the column utilization factor. This is the utilization ratio for the column based on concrete design, and it's going to be used in checking the compression, development length for isolated footings, but again, it's only used for the IS code. The last information needed in the foundation plan group is the pedestal and anchor bolt information. So we'll go ahead and select that option over in the main navigator. Now the pedestal and anchor bolt information is used to specify the pedestal parameters and anchor bolt layouts if they are present for support. Pedestal dimensions are needed to calculate or check for punching shear in mat foundations. For all other footing types, these dimensions will be used to calculate the critical design forces. For each of these options, we'll go ahead and click on the yes flag for pedestal design. We'll enter a pedestal height of 3 feet for each foundation type. and we can do a length and width of two feet for each one. Now we do have the option to specify some anchor bolt or anchor bolt library information for each support, but this information is only used for isolated footing drawing generation. So we're going to go ahead and skip the anchor bolt library information for this class. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.